serenaded by angels up to the throne serenaded by angels finally home greetings everyone my name is jamel Khalees, and i'm the president of the wilkesbury naacp and we are here with yet another highlight and i'm sitting down with mr adam mcgahey pastor at moving river ministries church um and there's nothing more to say. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing today? Doing fantastic. It's a great day. It's yes. raining outside. We need the rain. Right. Praise God. It's a beautiful fall day. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Mr. McGahey, how did, how did we get to um, Wilkesbury? That's my favorite question to ask. You were born and raised in the area. Did you transition? How did we get here? It's my parents' fault. <laughs> I had no say in the matter. I was two years old when I came here. Um, Born in 1963, we moved up here in 65, mm. uh, around 64, 65. And um, my parents were, you know, sharecroppers, and they moved from Florida, following the season here. Right. They liked this area, and this is where they planted their roots from then on. Nice. And so I've been here since then. I don't think we've ever spoken to anybody that's been in the area since 65. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. So let's dive into that a little bit. How was the area back then to you? Oh. Um, this area always um, seemingly has been behind the times. Mm. A rather slower paced uh, environment and it all it still seems that way mm -hmm. in a lot of respects yep. even though we have technology and everything today it just seems like this area stays in somewhat of a protected mm -hmm. um shield of of just moving on with the rest of the world right. and and just accepting changes mm -hmm accepting diversity right and so therefore um it's a little bit of tougher area right at, at times right. but in in that same respect it lends then its own benefits right so that y you can somewhat capitalize on that um environment where you can grow in it yes. and with it right and help it to come along right absolutely that's and, and that's that's what we're here to do right absolutely i think um some of our elder statesmen in the naacp who came out here in the 90s mm -hmm. said that this area was behind the time since then and mm -hmm. so it's uh, i can imagine 30 years earlier how much, uh, how different it was. So, okay, so you grew up here. What high school did you go to? Went to Hanover Hanover, High Hanover High, yeah. okay, nice, nice. And, and nice. that was its, <laughs> its, own, its oh, own challenge. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it was a fight, you know, and, you know, racism has always been something that has been around here. People just are not um, accepting of changes so much here and when they encounter someone from a different culture, different background, different race, it's almost like the old fairy tale stories, right. Beauty and the Beast, the Beast is not accepted. Right. Though you, I'm not categorizing any particular race or anything as a beast, but right. it's that analogy. Right, absolutely. And, and so therefore everyone hates the beast, let's kill the beast. Right. And that's what it's like so much when in a someone that is different right absolutely comes in. absolutely i i've, I've heard of, and i think that to be honest our, our students are still struggling with some of those issues for to sure. this day mm -hmm. um, so i i can only imagine like i said what you had to endure back then and, yeah. and to be a, a trailblazer in this area for what was to come and um, what we're living in now is a it's changing the city is changing the demographic is changing it's definitely it a lot to. of a lot of um city imports and a lot of people from different areas that are 
adding to what makes this county great and this area of this valley great. But um, so for yourself, after high school, what did you end up doing? Did you stay in the area? Like how, um, what were the next steps for you? Like so many uh, young people, you want to get away. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You just feel that urge to explore the right. rest of the world because it, it does. It seems like you're confined here. You're stuck in a bubble. Right. And so, yeah, I wanted to get away. And so I joined the military. I, at the time, you know, college was an option for me because I, I did well in school. But it was not an option for me mentally. Mm because I knew I was not ready to make that commitment. So right. I did not want to waste anyone's money. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, let me join the military. I joined the military and um, that took me away from the area. Um, I, I was a military policeman. I served in the military for four and a half years. I had a great time in the military, right. I really did. And uh, I went to military police investigator school, learned how to speak German was a plain closed cop in Germany mm. with investigations with German customs police. Oh, wow. And uh, it, it was really nice. I spent time in Fort Ord, California. I went to Presidio of Monterey in California, nice. their Defensive Language Institute. That's where I learned German. It was an eight month course, six hours a day, just being saturated <laughs> with German. And after the first week, you were not allowed to speak English in the class. Oh, wow. And so I, I learned German proficiently. Nice. And so it was quite an indoctrination. And then I went to Germany. And so therefore, I was able to use those skills. Right. Nice. I think, um, well, I know for sure my grandfather, my family's from Costa Rica. My grandfather had the opportunity to go study in Germany as well. Um, and nice. he, came, he came back to Costa Rica and he... Um, brought a physical education to the curriculum for like high school students and stuff like that so fantastic yeah germany seems to 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 be a, a hot spot <laughs> love to go back it's such a beautiful country uh the people were quite nice there in germany and a little bit more welcoming than mm -hmm. You know, even Back home. the people <laughs> here. <laughs> but, um, you know, this was home. And so after the service, I did come back here. Nice. Um, and came back here with the intent to follow that um, career of being a policeman, but decided otherwise because it just would not have been conducive to the lifestyle and being a productive member of society right. here right. in my own thinking right and so um it, it's not what i what god intended for me and it's not what i chose to follow I right think. absolutely so how do we get to ministry oh good question that question involves my mom my mom and dad divorced after um having 11 children together but they just somehow grew apart, went their separate ways. And um, I never really had a relationship with my dad, mm. uh, but I did with my mom and she's a great lady, like so many people's moms. Moms right. seemingly have this uh, foundational element to the family that is very beneficial to the children. Right. Because even as the Bible, it, in the Bible, it was the moms that were in charge of the household, mm -hmm. you know, and even if there was a mom and dad, the moms took care of the house, the moms took care of the children. Right. The dad was there as that support. Oh, praise God. Mm -hmm. And so um, with that, my mom, she had gotten saved when I was uh, away in the service. And um, w it was funny, you know, I got a phone call from my sibling saying, you got to talk to mom, something's happened. And so I talked to her and it was like, she had really found mm. what she had been missing so much in her life. And that struck a chord in me. Right. And when I got back, I got saved. I surrendered my life unto the Lord because I had found the truth as well. So many people go through life seeking for things, right. but everything that we really do need and want is found in the Christ right. Jesus. And how old were you like around that time? 24. 24? Yes. <laughs> 
24 years old. Um, and well, I just turned 25 when I surrendered my life unto the Lord when I got out of the service in 1987. And uh, it's been great ever since. Right. Wow. Wow, that's a great story. And so when, in 1987, when you did that, we were in this area. Did, and how did it, like, how did you get to, uh, I don't want to say the wrong word, is it pastoralism? How, how I became a pastor. Yeah. Okay. Um, in 1989 is when I actually started preaching. Mm. Okay. okay. And uh, one of my first sermons was preached at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Oh, wow. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> at that time. And uh, I belonged to um, the Apostolic Lighthouse Church, which is in Orange, Pennsylvania, up by Francis Slocum Park. Okay. And so um, after that church, we then went to another church which was closer to Wilkesburg because we were just commuting back and forth right. to the church in Orange. And we went to another church called the Apostolic Lighthouse here in Wilkesburg, which was pastored by Jerry Lewis. He has since deceased. And um, I was the assistant pastor there for a while. I got my license and um, then God called me into the ministry to pastor. We started our church in our home, you know, it was a grassroots effort mm -hmm. there in, but we didn't start that church until 2007, mm. 2007, yeah, 2006, 2007, we started there in home. We grew past um, the accommodations in our, our home. House. We then moved into a garage <laughs> next door. We renovated it. It used to be a karate school. From mm -hmm. there, you know, it just continued to grow. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth and other right. people came. And then this church came available for purchase in 2014, and we purchased this church mm -hmm. then. Nice. Nice. And then I believe you do have some, some news about some other locations that are, that are uh, being added to this, uh, to this um, institute. Moving River Ministries yes. is the name of the church. And so... Um, we were at a meeting. It's really kind of awesome how that all came about. Right. Just like this church, my wife and I had driven by it for many, many years. And we say, wouldn't it be awesome to have that little church? It doesn't look like much is going on there. And um, it so happened that my niece passed away. And um, I had stopped here several times just to make ourselves known. And very nice congregation that was here, former Messiah, Messiah Lutheran Church. And um, when my niece passed away, I asked if we'd be able to use their church for her funeral. And they were very accommodating. And so at that time, I said, if you ever get in the market to sell this church, please don't put it on the market. <laughs> Just contact know. me. And so they did. And that's how we acquired this church. Mm. And we did the same thing with that building there, Planters Peanut. Wouldn't it be nice to have that building one day to do our Christian theater? Because we had been to Sight and Sound in yeah, Lancaster, Lancaster. And we were so much inspired by what they did here and knew that if we could do something like that here, how beneficial it would be to our community. Right. And so it just so happened in May of 2021 last year march of 2021 we were at a meeting with the mayor mm -hmm. and it was a um neighborhood meeting and this came up as um the building planters peanut right. came up that the owners wanted to donate it to a nonprofit. all i did was raise my hand <laughs> <laughs> look raise at god my hand. and and um my wife and I looked at each other. We were just astounded, but that it just came up like that so nonchalantly and but and seemingly coincidentally, but there's no coincidences in no. God. And so through a series of meetings, talks and everything, uh, Mark Development did donate the property. It just transferred in at the end of August mm. of this year and so we are now the owners of that and we've already started some of the renovating there nice 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 
so what are your plans for for um like that space and just this space and you said you're going to turn it into a a a a theater yes but outside of that is there anything else um you're planning to do with it like community center or anything like that or? well it's going to be a theater of the arts based with on christianity themes um you know it's also going to be a children's music ministry that mm. is going to be uh, housed there it was started here and we're going to extend that out to the rest of the community as right, well right, where right. we will have instructors that are versed in music that will then teach children how right. to play right. musical instruments right. and the christian theater we're going to put on all type of biblical productions right. um you know so people can come and enjoy right absolutely we're actually doing our uh annual trunk or treat this year mm -hmm. in that parking area nice. and that's going to be october 26th october 26th and what time? from 6 p.m to 8 p.m from 6 p.m to 8 p.m okay so I mean, you kind of you covered so much, I think. So what, what can people, give us a, a high level um, overview of what people can expect once they come in, if they come in here on a Sunday or uh, whenever you guys are having anything and what can they look forward to and what you guys have coming up outside of that trunk or treat and then just give us the address. All right. So on Sundays, what, if someone comes here, what they are going to initially experience is just an atmosphere of love right from the heart mm -hmm. you know because that's that's how i even speak i speak from the heart i try not to rehearse right. you know and there's no need if it's in the heart but it's in the heart's going to come out of the heart right. and so um they're going to hear the truth of god's word i like to use history uh science math <laughs> um everything languages everything in my sermons mm -hmm. and those who also preach here because there's several other preachers here mm -hmm. my son is a preacher my wife preaches my sister preaches and we also have another brother and he's uh, Hispanic he preaches oh, nice. and so um, they're going to hear music and join in worship as we just sing praises unto the Lord and our praise and our worship is rather free. It's not anything that is just so rehearsed that the congregation does, is not able to join in. The congregation joins in and right. just, we allow the free moving of the Holy Spirit. And um, you know, it's in the messages that are preached that the intent is that they take those messages mm -hmm. and what they feel in the presence when they come. Don't leave that here. Take it with them right. wherever they go because that's the presence of the Lord and we want that to be experienced everywhere that people go. All right. Can you tell us the address one more time? The address is Moving River Ministries, 453 South Main Street, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. The zip code is 18701. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and God bless you. God bless you. Surrounded by praises to the King.